right, this is episode five of season two, What Would Barney Stinson Do? Uh, This is a segment here that will be specifically targeted towards individuals involved in the finance industry. I do peg it to specifically bankers, um, using the metaphor of Barney Stinson. Um, And so this is uh, ironically a time of year that uh, a lot of bankers come in the market for a car, um, which is kind of odd because this usually starts, you know, end of January into February, this really starts to taper down uh, the the selling season um, as people are getting ready for, for, for tax season. Um, Anyhow, I do realize that um, I didn't really answer the question of what would Barney Stinson do. So what does Barney Stinson do? He buys a suit. Now, why he does that, you'll have to stay tuned and listen in. So here it is, it is what it is, and this is the Whiskey Weekly Podcast. Brown chicken, brown cow. Hello, listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Wisco Weekly Podcast. I'm flying solo uh, today. Kelly will be uh, joining me uh, on the next episode here. But today is going to be a hopefully a fun one here as, as the title appropriately is labeled, What Would Barney Stinson Do? And the reason for that is it's always around this time after working at Audi for a few years that, um, you know, when you kind of get into the tail end of January and into February, you would think that, okay, sales starts to slow down, tax season is coming. But then there's a group, a specific demographic of buyers that starts to come in. And who are they? They are none other than your bankers. And uh, a good friend of mine is a banker. And so I remember, you know, just asking him or then, you know, even just asking some of the clients that I would have, you know, what is it about, you know, what's going on right now that all of a sudden you guys are, you feel compelled to, to do something, you feel compelled to buy something. And universally, what's happening right now is bankers are getting paid their big bonuses. So I thought, you know, the title of what would Barney Stinson do would be appropriate. Barney? Machines really working for you. Nice stuff. That one's going to reward shareholders soon. I foresee aggressive growth in my future. Oh, what up? My mom's wrong. There are nice guys in New York. We just have to go by my hotel room first. My bed was broken. I just have to make sure they fixed it. But if it's fixed, can we have sex on it and then go shopping? <laughs> That was the episode there with uh, Britney Spears. But uh, anyhow, um, Barney Stinson, of course, the myth, the man, the legend of the banking world. I mean, you know, first off, talk about how awesome this guy is. Um, You know, on one hand, I am a heterosexual myself, but in his personal life, he is a homosexual. But on the show of How I Met Your Mother, he gets to meet and make out and have all these uh, shenanigans with a, a lot of beautiful women on that show. So that's a lucky dude right there. Anyhow, um, you know, just a quick thing uh, I wanted to uh, share. So uh, I'm a I'm a big tennis fan. I, I, I've i really only gotten into tennis uh, probably over the last maybe two, three years, although my dad growing up would always watch it. Um, and, um, you know, I had the chance to watch uh, the Australian Open um, and the finals uh, of for the men and the women. On the women's side, it was uh, between uh, Simona Halep and Caroline Wozniacki. And uh, both players have not won a major at all, and Caroline Wozniacki ended up uh, being crowned the winner. And then on the men's side, it was uh, Marin Cilic versus the legend Roger Federer. And uh, what ended up what was initially looking like a pretty easy match for, for Roger, um, he ended up winning in five sets, and it ended up being a really good match to watch. But one of the things that I love about tennis, and I think this kind of speaks to the whole capitalism of, of America, and not to be mistaken for corporatism, because that's definitely, a, in my opinion, a greater evil. I think probably a lot of people would agree with that. Um, but capitalism. 
So I love the fact that in tennis, an individual sport where if you are busting your ass and you're putting in the work and you're playing smart and you're doing just all the right things, then after you play this match, what you know something that universally happens with um, a lot of these top players is after they play their match and as they're getting ready to interview, they'll go back into their bag, their tennis bag, and what do they start to do? They start to kind of just uh, dig through there to find this little pouch. And in that pouch, what's in that pouch? It's all of their jewelry. So they start to then put on their watches, their rings, their tennis bracelets. Uh, and I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it's a classy, sophisticated sport. And I love tennis for the fact that, you know, you can combine sports on one hand and then it still has the sophistication on the other hand. So, which brings me to back to the banking industry and how that in some way, shape, or form, uh, maybe the, 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 the positives of it um, are also a very, uh, you know, capitalistic type industry where you are significantly rewarded for your hard work. And uh, a lot of that uh, hard work plays itself out in, in material possessions. So uh, one thing that, uh, you know, when, when bankers get paid these big bonuses, what's interesting to me is that, um, Yes, bankers do want to negotiate some, but at the end of the day, right, they have this lump sum cash that they're just kind of, it's burning a hole in their pants there. So they're looking to do something with it. And um, more times out of not, a lot of uh, bankers uh, end up uh, leasing. And a favorable lease for anybody is a high residual, a very low money factor, and the shortest term possible, Right. Well, that's not always the case because uh, manufacturers, you know, they like to kind of dictate the terms of a lease. This is where the manufacturers have the upper hand because they control everything. Um, they don't control the price, and that's just still where the consumer gets to negotiate whenever possible. But there is an opportunity for individuals, and, and now this is not just uh, for bankers, but for individuals who do have a lot of disposable income and who are also looking to be a little bit more savvy in how they lease a car. This is not, uh, this, this type of lease does not occur very often. I can tell you, and I can give you all the references for this, I'm pretty notorious about pushing this with uh, a lot of uh, my clients, and that is a multiple security deposit lease, a multiple security deposit lease. A multiple security deposit lease allows the individual, the lessee, to buy down the rate of the vehicle, okay? Uh, and you do that by putting down these security deposits. So what ends up happening a lot of times is now, you know, if you're looking at, you know, some of the, the mass, uh, the, the, the manufacturers uh, in the mass volume segment, Toyotas, Fords, Hondas, um, they're, these might not always be ideal or a multiple security deposit lease may not be as ideal. And the reason for it is the rate, uh, the money factor is already significantly low or it's, uh, you know, subventive, it's incentivized through the manufacturer. But when you definitely get up to the luxury cars, um, if you're not getting the base model vehicle or the quote unquote lease special, then a lot of times the rates that are going to be available start to creep up fairly high. Now, this is maybe leasing 101, but let me just state um, this from the, from the outset here. To convert a money factor into an interest rate, you take your money factor, which is usually represented by a decimal point and five digits thereafter. So you can have something like 0 0.00120. And if you, what you want to do then is you want to take that money factor and then you want to multiply it by 2,400. You multiply by 2,400, the approximate interest rate. And again, the key word there is the approximate interest rate. Okay, this is not exactly an interest rate. Um, that I'll save that for another episode on the difference between an interest rate and a money factor. But the approximate interest rate uh, is 2.88%, which is, it's fairly good, right? Now, when you start, though, getting into a lot of these luxury cars where, you know, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, Porsche, where you're not getting that base model lease special vehicle, where those vehicles do have an incentivized uh, money factor, then a lot of times these money factors start to creep up fairly high. 
And so all of a sudden you could be looking at a money factor that is no longer 2.88%, but you might get something that's 0.00220, in which that approximate interest rate is 5.28%. And you throw that around to a banker and immediately they will be turned off. I mean, they know very well what the interest rates are across the entire industry uh, of, of uh, you know, across automotive, real estate, so forth and so on. So you you dance 5.28% in front of them and they're immediately going to just shun away from you because they know that it is extremely high. So there is a way though that you can essentially buy down that rate and save a lot of money with it. And that is through a multiple security deposit lease or an MSD, um, as I will further uh, um, call it now. So get your calculators out if you'd like. I'm going to just walk through a series of numbers with you. Um, let's say, for instance, if you're looking at a $40,000 car, okay, $40,000 MSRP, and it carries a residual of 52%. Um, so then the, the residual would specifically be 20,800. Um, and then you're gonna put the minimum down and let's say the minimum, minimum down in this case would be $1,500. Um, presuming you do a 36 month lease. And again, let's presume the money factor here is 0 0.00220, which the equivalent interest rate or the approximate interest rate is 5.28%. You can essentially buy down that rate by 0 0.00005. 0 0.00005, four zeros and a five, okay? And you can buy it down the amount of nine times. So then you essentially can buy down the rate 0 0.00045. So then if you take 0 0.00220 and you buy that all the way down, then you're looking at a, a, a money factor of 0 0.00175, which the equivalent interest rate would be 4.2%, you get, you save a full interest, uh, a full uh, percentage point here, okay? So what, how does this translate uh, in the grand scheme of things then when you're looking at, uh, you know, what your payment is? So the difference here would be if you were looking at, um, oh, actually, here, let me just, I need to do a quick calculation here. Uh, Okay, so if you're looking at um, uh, your monthly payment, and again, you've put $1,500 out of pocket, um, I'll touch upon how much you would have to put down in order to buy down the rate, but uh, presuming, again, you put your $1,500 down and you do an MSD, you then would have to, you would get a payment including tax, and I'm using 9%, I believe that's LA County tax, uh, so on the higher end, uh, you would get a payment of, if you did not buy down the rate, so presuming you went with the 5.28%, you would get a payment including tax of 707. 707. If you bought down the rate, you would essentially get uh, a payment including tax of 677. Okay, so that's a $30 difference there in, uh, in monthly payment, which over the course of 36 months would translate to $1,000 and $1,080, okay, in, in savings that you would get. So how does the multiple security deposit work then? So what you what happens is now is you have to put down the um, nine times the amount of your monthly payment rounded to the nearest 25. Okay, that was extremely confusing. Let me paint an example. So in the case that I'm talking about where the um, payment was 707, including tax, your base payment on that vehicle, okay, presuming this, and this is the 5.28% uh, interest rate, is $649. That's your base payment. So what would happen then is you, your security deposit amount would be, you, you have to round up, so it would be 650, and you could put nine times that security deposit down. So that would be a total of $5,850 you are going to put down in addition to your um, 
to your to your drive offs. Okay, so th- therefore, then you're looking at a total of uh, 7350, 7350 down, uh, and of that amount, five thousand eight hundred fifty is the security deposit that lets you buy down the rate 0.00045, which then equates to a 4.2% interest rate. Okay. So now here's the scenario here. You have bought now, and you don't have to buy down the rate, by the way, by by nine um, secure deposits. If you want to buy down by five, you can. But um, in, in the case of something like this, it I don't think I've ever had anyone say that they wanted to just do five or seven or eight. You do the full nine. That's where you get the most savings, right? Because then at the end of the day, you know, as you've put down 5,850 and you've, you're saving over the course of the lease, okay, you're saving o- over the course of the lease $1,080. So all in all, what you're, what you're saving here or the the return that you're getting on that five thousand eight hundred eighty is eighteen uh, percent. So you're getting an eight eighteen percent return on your your multiple security deposit. Show me the money. Now that's not even the best part here. Of uh, um, it, th- that's not even the best part of of a multiple security deposit. So, you know, of of course, if you have money invested right now in the stock market, you your rate of return is probably phenomenal. I mean, uh, I I think I'm probably in the th- you know in the high twenties, probably right at thirty percent. So that's probably what the average is going around across the industry. So, so eighteen percent is not that great, you know. And a lot of times, what ends up happening, the pushback that sometimes happens here. From the dealer, uh, are it comes down to two things. One is uh, the amount of work, and it's not a lot of work, but it's certainly tedious work. The amount of work a dealership has to do in order to provide you a multiple security deposit lease is fairly tedious, and that's kind of where a lot of um, uh, dealerships may shy away from that. So that's one. That's one kind of obstacle. Um, and why dealerships don't push this a whole lot. The second thing is that a dealership will then also argue, well, you're putting fifty, you know, five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars um, to buy down this lease, and you're only getting an eighteen percent return. Well, the stock market is giving you a, a twenty-five percent return. Why don't you just take that money and invest it into the stock market? And okay, yeah, that would make sense, except. Except the fact that the five thousand eight hundred fifty dollars that you've put in a multiple security deposit lease is fully refundable, so therefore you have a um, you have this security deposit that is returning eighteen percent over the course of three years, and essentially it is risk free. Oh snaps! I said it. I know. Risk free. I know. A lot of you, a lot of you bankers out there, just got a just got a audio Viagra right in your ear, right there, didn't you? So a multiple security deposit allows you to buy down the rate. It buys it down to the point where you can save, uh, you know, a full percentage point, um, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. And at the end of the day, when you do calculate how much money you are saving. Uh, between your monthly payment, if you did not put down the security deposit, and if you do that over the course of your three-year lease, um, you have the opportunity to save a lot of money. You're not making money, but you're going to be saving a lot of money in which then eventually you can get that security deposit back. Now, when you get that security deposit back, sometimes it'll take a little bit uh, until you get it back. Um, What ends up happening there is at the very end of your lease, the dealership, unfortunately, does not have anything to do with this in this case. So what will happen is they'll have you contact uh, the, um, the the lender. So uh, again, if let's say you're with Audi, you would contact Audi Financial. Um, and then all of a sudden, Audi Financial, they'll review the records. They'll see that you turned in your car. Um, and then eventually, they will mail you a check for that uh, secure deposit amount. 
Um, I think I covered everything here. Um, I hope I didn't miss out. I, I hope that all made sense to you. Again, I know I was throwing around a lot of numbers there, but um, you know, for all the bankers out there, this probably makes a whole lot of sense to you. So if you do have questions with a multiple security deposit lease, uh, please do call in um, or write us on Facebook and, and let us know. We'd be happy to answer those questions for you. So uh, thanks for tuning in for this episode of What Would Barney Stinson Do? And as always, at least in the words of Barney Stinson, this episode is, wait for it, no, I, I screwed that up. This episode is legend, wait for it, dairy. And of course, this is cheers to the customer experience. <laughs>